Hello, and welcome to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Ducco with the Drone Launch Academy, here to find the answers to your drone questions. These are questions that you yourself submit. In today's question, we're actually revisiting a question that we answered over a year ago, but a lot's changed, and we're kind of taking a different spin on this one. And the question is, what is the best capturing software for beginner drone pilots? So today I have with me a beginner drone pilot, Peter Morsink. He's the founder of his new company, 3D Flight Maryland. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. My pleasure. So before we get into, you know, discussing a handful of these softwares, do you mind just sort of telling us a little bit about yourself, how you gotten into drones, and what was your background before that? I'm uh, originally uh, a technician that used to work in a cancer center. Started working for companies that make that equipment for about 25 years. And in March of this year, I decided to leave that company due to various reasons. I kind of wanted to figure out what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I discovered drones. And um, I love aviation. I'm a pilot. So drones caught my interest. And I basically took a month to figure out if this was a business. And with uh, different training courses among, you know, Drone Launch Academy, I was able to figure out that that is an opportunity and a possibility. I was like, you know what? I think I know what I want to do when I grow up. I'm going to be a drone pilot. That is awesome. And so you've been doing this now for about four months. I took the month of May to basically figure it all out. And by the end of May, I had a Mini 4 Pro and a Mavic 3E. Excellent. Excellent. Well, welcome. And I'll just say before we get into the question too, Peter, you, you're you an active member of our Drone Launch Connect community where you've gone in and you've, you're four months into this, but you're already answering people's questions over DLC, putting your input, your opinion, sharing resources. You're a huge part of the conversation that's happening on that platform and we really appreciate it. And so let's get into it. You've tried out a handful of capturing softwares and it seems like some are good for certain things. There's pros and cons, but you do have one favorite. And so I'm going to sort of let you take it away here and, and, mm -hmm. and kind of discuss what you found. Well, when I started drones, my first thought was I'm going for mapping. Basically the whole real estate thing didn't really attract me and you need to make cool shots and I'm not an artistical person. So I was like, okay, real estate might not be as much for me. Mapping is I think financially better. So with mapping in mind, I bought the Mavic E3. And of course, it comes with DJI Pilot 2. And I have the RC2 controller, so the one with the big screen. And initially, that's what I started using to make maps and start flying. So if you talk about other ways of doing maybe a, a facade inspection or a roof inspection, some other things, I can't compare those software. I can only look at it from a mapping perspective. And as I used initially Pix4D Mapper and then Pix4D um, Matic to process my maps, I thought, okay, let's use Pix4D Capture to capture the image. Thinking like, okay, software from the same company as I use my mapping processing with, that must make sense, right? It will probably work well together. Those two, DJI Software and Pix4D Capture Pro, are the two that I've used the most in recent months. What I see is that Pix4D, it does have an option where you can do a single grid or a double grid right away. It's very easy. That in comparison to the DJI, it's the only and I'm saying air quotes, criticism I have for DJI is that when you go into mapping, it only allows you to make a single grid basically, right? Mm -hmm. And not a double grid, which if you do maps only, people say a single grid is fine. As I'm learning and I want to impress people with what we can do, I always make a double grid because the 3D maps will look better that way, right? Buildings or building construction equipment doesn't look like the weird blob on the map, it looks better. So DJI will not allow me to do that double grid right away, but there's an easy workaround. You make a single, and as soon as that stops and you tell the drone not to return home, but just stop and let it hang there, you copy your plan and you rotate the flight direction 90 degrees. Oh, wow. By the way, very easy to do that on DJI because in DJI, as far as I can see, is the only software where I can enter values numerically. So instead of using the sliders and trying to get it exactly to 90 degrees or 25 miles or 200 feet, I can just tap enter the number. Very, very easy from a, from a user perspective. Okay. Pix 40 does do the double grid right away. It flies differently too. And it flies differently, which actually I would say causes Pix 40 to take a longer time to do the same map. And I okay. recently did a test where I flew the same area with five different pieces of software and then compared the times and the Pix4D was almost one and a half to 1.75 times longer because what Pix4D does is the drone will fly a leg, comes to the end, it stops. Then it mm -hmm. rotates and slides to the side, 
stops and then goes right so you're losing about five seconds per leg and that doesn't sound like much but i i practice on a solar farm close by which is 200 acres and there are probably 40 50 legs in both directions that's two three minutes of time and i think it's even longer than that the dji so far the drone basically comes to the end slows down a little bit makes a turn and goes on right so i just i think it's a faster way of making a map Mm -hmm. So if you have big maps or you need to do two or three maps a day, this works in your advantage from an efficiency perspective. Okay. Did you notice any like quality difference in terms of like, you know, longer time, better quality or no difference like that? Okay. No, because it's, it's actually the transition. So when it comes to the end of the leg, it will take the last picture because you hear that click. Then it takes about five seconds where it moves. And it depends on how far the legs are apart, right? I see. And then it moves, it stops, you hear click for the first picture and mm -hmm. then it goes. Right? I gotcha. So one of the things I think that's, and I've asked Pix40 and their support forum about it, like if they say it will take you, let's say 20 minutes to do the map, but Pix40, it's going to take longer. There's one, somehow with that stop and, and move and stop, the time's off. It always takes longer. The, you will see the timer run to zero before you're finished. And uh, this morning, it was only, according to the plan, two minutes and 20 seconds of a flight and it comes to zero and it flies at least for another 30 seconds before it was actually at the end right so yeah it just adds up one of the things that I've, again i've asked support about is like i tell the drone to fly let's say 25 30 miles an hour during the image acquisition it always flies at 22 miles an hour and i don't know why because dji software can fly faster faster means less time right i'm done yeah. faster so it's i look at how quickly can I generate the quality I need to deliver to my customer? Yeah. Yeah. Great thing to know, obviously, for uh, you know customer satisfaction and, and dealing with a client, you're doing a job and maybe you're juggling many jobs. That timing is an important thing to have. Now, just to be clear, you're using an RC controller, right? You're not using, you know, touchscreen phone kind of thing. Okay. Well, no, I've, when I was researching everything, I heard a lot of times like, well, you got to have a battery pack close by because, you know, your phone can run out of power or your phone gets too hot. Mm -hmm. uh, iPads get, and iPhones get too hot. Uh, so I was like, you know what, I'll spend a little bit more. And I think the Mavic 3E always comes with the professional controller, the RC2. And um, that just made sense to me. Right. I yeah. use my phone a lot of times as a hotspot so it can download, you know, elevation data or something like that for a plan. And the other thing, it's a screen, a cell phone screen. It's just way too small. There's no way you can do anything with your finger there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, so. it's, that's difficult. And I don't want to get ahead of myself here. I'm uh -huh. uh, based on it. We were chatting quite a bit before we started this recording is, is what you had kind of talked about <laughs> customer satisfaction and working with clients and even saving time was that there's certain softwares that are a little easier to share with clients, share content maps with clients. Want, can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So what I decided to do was to subscribe to Pix4D Cloud and then the first version, which is $59 a month out of Pix4D Mapper or Survey or Matic, you can upload directly to the cloud. So it will load everything in the right format. And then as I'm doing progression shots of, of different places, I can make a map, basically a folder, and you put all the different maps for that time in there. And then if I want to share it with somebody, they have automatic share options in there. You click a button, it copies a link, I send it to the people, and boom, they got their map, right? And they can zoom in, they can measure lengths, areas, volumes. So it kind of takes stuff away that where I would need to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. They want me to, to measure it for them. I can. It's easy. Yeah. I can just share it and it's a depository. I don't have to take any time to manage, right? Yeah. Time saved, customer happy. That's the idea. Well, we'll see as I start using it. It's a subscription. Some people, like one very, very prominent member of Drone Community, Michael Lilly, does mm -hmm. not like subscriptions. But hey, it, I, I was talking to him yesterday. If it saves me a lot of time, I'm willing to do that because I'm always amazed how long it takes to process maps put all the information in and then get them ready. So, yeah. Well, and in this phase of being a drone pilot, you're experimenting and you're looking for things to test out. You don't always want to spend that money, but this one offers something unique and special for you that you can actually leverage. And so you found something there. That's cool. I'll add one thing to it, that mm -hmm. if I get paying customers and they want progression, I will upgrade to the cloud advanced because okay. cloud advanced is one unique feature 
and that's the ability to put them in a timeline. So mm -hmm. I can send one link to the customer and it shows a timeline at the top and you can scroll to it and you can say, oh, uh, September 9th, September 7th, September 24th, October 3rd. So they can click on it and it automatically, and you can even compare things, right? They have one of those windows where you can drag a line left and right and you can yeah. compare two dates, which I'm not paying $250 a month now for me to practice. Yeah. As soon as I have a customer, I will do it and I will I will charge a certain amount to the customer. Like, oh, you want that functionality? Okay, that's going to cost you. I'm going to, I don't know. If I got two or three customers, I'll charge them $100 each or something, right? Where mm -hmm. if you want that ability, you have to go over the plus package or the plus plus advanced gold package, right? now. I'm kidding. But it's, I, I feel like if you can explain the value to the customer, like, hey, this way, if you're willing to pay a little bit more, I can set it up for you where you can have all of your different images over time in one spot. Who's going to say no to that? Right. So if I just want to quickly mention three other pieces of software that I used sure. to map, which I'm not as experienced in as the DJI and the Pix4D mm -hmm. software. The first one was MapPilot Pro. I basically signed up for the free accounts everywhere. That was the first one that said, oh, you have a Mavic 3E. You cannot fly with a Mavic 3E without becoming a higher level of subscription. Now, I first went for the $5 one a month. Oh, sorry. You can still not fly your Mavic. <sighs> okay. So I went for the $15 a month. And I'll say, you know what, for the test, I'll try this out. And it seemed to work fine. It's a little bit different in the way you set it up. You can set it up online too as a mission, the mission mm -hmm. planner, and then download it. So I think that's very nice. I don't think DJI software has that, but like I said, okay. on, on the controller, it's a lot easier to use. Then I wanted to try Drone Link, and they said, the software also told me, like, oh, you can't use it because you have a Mavic 3E. I needed to go to their next level, which was $50 a month. I'm like, this is insane. You know, yes, yeah. I could have tried it out in the 14 day trial where I signed up and then didn't have time for it. The trial went by, right? Mm -hmm. But just to fly and capture data at $50 a month while DJI and Pix4D are free makes no sense to me. Yeah. The other one I, I tried because I, I know that if I would do any work for Fly Guys, that is Drone Deploy. They use Drone Deploy exclusively and you don't have to buy the membership because that is the minimum membership is $250 a month with them. If you fly for Fly Guys, they will actually give you an, a, a special login. You fly on their enterprise account. And what they will do is they will basically say, okay, Peter, you got a, a, an opportunity here. Do you want to fly? Yes. Okay. Here's the plan that we already made for you. This is how we want you to fly it. Download it, go fly it, and then upload the images and you're done. Right. So drone deploy is a good one to learn. It did not cost anything to try it out and mm -hmm. it seemed to work fine. And the times and a number of images were very, very similar to the other ones. It's one that I will have to just start practicing to get good at, because if I want to use a fly guy as one of the services, then I know I have to be good at that. I probably use DJI software. And that's fair. I think you've really provided a nice kind of overview here. And I think that kind of these little, I wouldn't say caveats, but exceptions with some of these softwares is important because it, it, it affects, it really kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish, the job you're getting done. If you're working with clients, I appreciate that that kind of insight. I, I wanted to ask this last question to you before we let you go, because in the place you're at right now, you're four mm -hmm. months into your drone piloting, you've created your LLC, you're fully, you're in this now, you quit your job. Job, what advice do you have for people who want to do exactly what you're doing now while you're kind of still in this initial phase? What can you tell some of these beginner pilots who might be a little nervous, might be a little freaked out about making this big leap? Well, I would say don't resign your job right away, right? <laughs> I did it because I was fed up with the company after 25 years. I'm done, right? And then I discovered drones. If you currently have a full-time job and it's maybe not the thing you're passionate about, but, you know, it pays the bills. Keep doing it. Do everything before. And a lot of people do this as a side gig. And that way you can have an ability to practice, learn. And then if the balance starts to shift, right, like, wait a minute, I can take on more drone work. And that would, you know, offset what I make in my other job. You know, then it's maybe time to resign. It's different for everybody. Do you have kids that still need to go to college? All that is behind me, right? So I'm, I'm a little bit more free in that respect. What I would say is take the time to research. A lot of these little things that I mentioned is that I found out by experience. Yeah. Drone community is the perfect place to ask a hundred questions. And we answer those, just ask the next hundred, right? Because they're going to be there. And it was a surprise for me how long it took to start your LLC, get that done. You know, unless you weren't willing to pay extra money to the States to get a process quicker, it mm -hmm. takes six weeks, yeah. right? And you got to open your bank accounts and you got to get your tax ID number 
and you got to do your part 107 which was yes. for me relatively easy because i already have my pilot's license the part 107 is 99 percent the same it's based on the drone rules you're going to learn but airspace all of that i'm already familiar with so my part 107 was a very small i did it everything in like two weeks right so it was easy i did the classes and did the test and i was done when you look back that's a huge time commitment you have to put in to learn the 107 now i know there's courses that help you here at drone launch academy with that if people have questions on hey i don't understand this about airspace ping me on on drone community it's fine no problem cool um, and that's a great segue <laughs> Yes. Because, you know, every quarter we like to open up the Drone Launch Connect community to newcomers. We welcome them, you know, with get togethers in the evenings. We have happy hours. I highly encourage anybody who's watching this, who's listening to this, take advantage of those sign up windows, become a part of this community. I, I'll admit it's so much more worth it than even, you know, these, these podcasts. I like to think of these podcasts as more of a highlight reel of what's going on in the Drone Launch Connect community because those are, that's really where the discussions are happening. That's really where advice is being given, wins, losses, even. Even, even equipment being sold at a fair price amongst uh, the other thing is you guys offer so many you know Q and A's with people there there are weeks where I'm like there's four things I'm like I'm sorry like I think yesterday was a new member welcome between six and seven I'm sorry I had an appointment I had to be somewhere right but yeah sometimes like I feel like every night I can be on something or at least two nights a week and the happy hours have been amazing well we just talk we just talk and share information hey how do you do this yeah. right and it's incredibly valuable Peter I, I appreciate you coming on for this episode sharing your experiences early on and what I really look forward is to to hearing how things go moving forward. I'd love to eventually have you back on a little farther down the road, see what else you've discovered. Maybe we can hone down our list a little more or move it up to more of an yeah. intermediate class. I'll be watching and listening uh, <laughs> to you over the Drone Launch Connect community. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a little more there. Cool. If you are a part of the Drone Launch Connect community, you can actually submit a question, ask a question over there, and I'll see it. If somebody like Peter doesn't chime in and answer it all before I get to it. We're going to answer it on this podcast. And so please type in your questions there. We'd love to see it. Or if you're not part of the Drone Launch Connect community or or just another way you can submit a question is through ydqa.io. Type it in there. We'll see it and we will find someone who can answer that drone question. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.